Hello. Uh, hi, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Sorry. Good morning. How are you today? Hello. Hello. How are you today? Yeah, good, ma'am. Uh, once again, ma'am, I'll start my video. So here uh, on the screen, you see uh, a cabin crew, a male cabin crew. And this is how you dress for the interview when you're going for a cabin crew interview. Okay? okay. So yesterday when we spoke about uh, that, I told you that I'll show you a male cabin crew, how to take pictures and uh, how to take uh, professional photographs when you have to go for a cabin crew interview. This is how you're going to uh, be for exactly see the blazer at the pan they are of matching color then the tie is of uh, contrast with the white shirt so you uh you can go ahead with uh, this attire whenever you're going for a camera okay okay sure. okay uh so i believe that uh, you have already uh, uh ready with the homework which i have given you yeah yeah yes, okay so let's start. Uh, if you can tell me what is a capital crew yesterday, what we have gone through. So I'd like to know that how much you have understood what's a capital crew. And please look, keep the mic very close to your mind. Yeah, one second. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like a cabin crew is a frontline officer. Seems to be. Uh, like uh, is the person who take care uh, whatever is happening in the aircraft. Like uh, is the first person who will be able to like uh, get to know the information, or else he is the person who handles whatever the things going on in the aircraft, or. Uh, uh, he is the first person who would uh, get the information uh, about uh, all the queries uh, and uh, uh, like uh, if for example uh, if uh, aircraft is uh, like uh, uh, like um, it has been landed uh, like uh, quite since lately means uh, the cabin crew will be query uh, like uh, invest uh, like they will be queried uh, regarding the questions so they to carry out uh, these kinds of personal activities too and uh, Mm, yeah, yes, ma'am. Uh, like uh, they'll, uh, uh, the most important services uh, like, uh, um, like the cabin crew must have to be in the flight to service the passengers of the flight. Um, if uh, if there is no service to, uh, like uh, minimum the cabin crew, or minimum the cabin crew must have to be in the flight. Okay, uh, so that they can they could uh, take care of the activities of the passengers and their fellow crews too sometimes okay, okay. so okay. you have given me the overview the entire uh, overview overall uh, way the capital works what's uh, these are uh, the responsibilities are and duties are yeah. however however whenever if you are asked this question you have to put it in one or two sentences and functions exactly yes. what that is okay. exactly the way i told you earlier Okay. I completely, um, I appreciate your answer and you have given the complete view of what Captain does, and uh, which is very good. Uh, but you can put this in one statement, like uh, a cabin crew uh, so is yes, a frontline officer. A frontline officer. Frontline uh, warriors, you can say, but uh, normally, how are you going to put it in uh, actually? Because frontline warriors, one of the uh, you know, the feature or a kind of quality or kind of responsibility which the cabin crew follows and okay. takes it with mm. uh, him or her. However, whenever this question is asked, the yeah, cabin crew is, um, uh, they are uh, one of those uh, people who work in a team uh, in the aircraft cabin and they carry out and work towards the safety of the passengers and the aircraft and serve the passengers as well. Mm. This is what cabin crews are talking about. Okay? Because when when cabin crew uh, duty, you know, when cabin crew comes 
comes into the mind, the only thing, you know, in the day that the normal people, they, they don't think of all these safety, service mm -hmm. procedures. They only go, the only cabin crew, it was still they only serve the passengers. But okay. no, there is more to it. Yes. That was the way I told you yesterday. Yeah. So, yes, we have given you the company phone. However, whatever discussion is asked, you have to tell the exactly this way. Okay. People who work in a group of three, uh, in, in a group of uh, in a group where uh, they take care of the safety of the passengers as well as the aircraft and serve the passengers. So the person, okay. okay. Now, uh, what are the duties and responsibilities of the cabin? Uh, yeah, well, like I already said in the cabin crew definition, like uh, duties and responsibilities, they have to uh, take care of the passengers and they have to serve the passengers and uh, they have to maintain their uh, will behavior and uh, to maintain their crew members, like uh, their fellow crew members too. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, they uh, like... Uh, uh, if there is, a, for example, uh, if there is a maid, uh, like uh, the cabin crew, uh, the cabin crew is a person too who is responsible for uh, uh, communicating the problem which is going on in the aircraft, which is in flight. So uh, to the ground person, uh, am I right now? <clears throat> Very good. You yeah. have given, yeah. you've given me the detailed uh, uh, responsibility. Yeah. And, uh, uh, if uh, a passenger in the aircraft in flight goes on through any emergency uh, emergency situation, the cabin crew must have to give the first aid, and the cabin crew must have to be trained for that uh, kind of situations too. Okay. Hmm. Good. Now, uh, what are the Let's discuss uh, about the uh, life a day in the life of the cabin crew. Um, as I have also already discussed, how the cabin crew uh, starts with their daily life when they go on a flight. So let's discuss, and I want to know from you that have you understood that completely uh, properly, and we'll discuss it today. So please uh, go ahead and mention how is the day in the life of a cabin crew goes. Like uh, if the flight. It's in, uh, if it's in, the flight is in early morning. Could you uh, please put the mic to yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, like if the flight is in uh, early morning, for example, uh, six o'clock, so the cabin crew must have to be uh, get up at early four o'clock and uh, get this, uh, get he or herself ready and uh, to, uh, to, reach the airport at a correct uh, a given time and uh, to make the entry before and uh, after before uh, before uh, to make the entry and uh, to um, to uh, uh, to listen to the uh, you said me like uh, the cabin crew must have to go on through briefing right so uh, they must attend the briefing and uh, they co uh, they can go on in the flight and uh, they can check the safety uh, uh, safety procedures of the flight and uh, uh, they can uh, make arrangements of the services and foods and uh, before they take off uh, so that um, uh, uh, and uh, after that, while the passengers uh, starts to arrive, they have to make the passengers uh, to get uh, to make the passengers to get into that comfort zone um, uh, to give uh, to answer all the queries of the passengers and uh, to make them uh, to seated uh, to be seated in the right place and uh, to uh, what is it uh, to um, to take care of their uh, luggages and to handle uh, um, their so that, uh, 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 no no like uh, to handle uh, the uh, what is it handicapped uh, passengers too will be they have to be handling the uh, these kinds of passengers and uh, Am I going on correct now? <laughs> yes, yes, please go. Please go. Okay. So after that, uh, 
they will be heading to the flight uh, they will be heading to the uh, location where the flight goes on uh, and uh, after the flight departures uh, they go out from the aircraft and uh, they go on to the um, recommended uh, hotels which have been given to by the airlines so that uh, they can make their comfort there and uh, uh yeah, the, uh, the advantages of the cabin crew like uh, they can uh, go on with the place wherever they uh, like uh, they can explore more things at uh, in a in a small duration of time maybe um after this the routine will be go soon like uh, the cabin crews uh, or the mo uh, most person who travel more places likely so now they are uh, there in the hotel accommodation okay. and after that uh, they will depart from that city they will uh, come out of the city they will again get onto the aircraft they will carry on the same duties which has been uh, required yeah uh, like uh, after the next flight is scheduled to them and they uh, uh, uh while well, they getting the information of the next flight so they have to prepare their uh, they have to make their arrangements and uh, they have to make their routine for the next flight uh after that uh, i think uh, you said yesterday like uh, cabin crew will be getting uh, three uh, two to three days off and all so after a uh, long term uh, a long time of duration of flight so they can return to their uh, own place and uh, they can uh, make their uh, sorry uh, they can be uh, reach their uh, say, uh, reach their home i think so their native maybe. so for example now they have landed back to uh, to the, their base and where, when is the first place where they have to go after landing back to the base uh, like so, um they have to uh, debriefing they have to attend the they debriefing have to go to the airport yeah, yeah. sign yes. out first, sign out right? yes. they have to go debriefing. for the debriefing and they have to make the entry out of the airport now may i ask you what is briefing and debriefing could you please tell me about it? uh briefing means like uh before flight uh what are all the cabin crews must go on and uh the person will ask about the questions for example uh, uh what if the passenger goes on through uh, like this what if the passenger is goes on like with an emergency situation so that the, if the cabin crew uh the cabin crew must have to answer the questions or else uh, the cabin crew must uh, like uh, or else the cabin crew um, he or she uh, is not uh, uh, eligible for on that day uh, of their flight uh, they can be they could uh, they they could be uh, made as a like uh, they could be sent home if uh, they uh, they can't able to uh, answer the briefing questions and uh, after flight uh, like uh, after the flight departures uh, debriefing like uh, the cabin crew must have to explain what all the situations are all gone through in the aircraft um in uh, and uh, they have to mention their crew members uh, so crew member names um and uh, they have to uh, like so normally, uh, so normally yeah. they get along in the briefing they are uh, <laughs> about to they, they actually exchange the information Uh, which is required for the particular flight, and okay. that's what happens in the briefing, and they head on towards the aircraft. Mm, Now, yeah. what is debriefing? yeah uh, debriefing means uh, uh, like uh, after get uh, like uh, the flight departures uh, the cabin crew must have to uh, report the situation which are all gone uh, undergone in the aircraft with passengers and uh, in flight situations and uh, flight uh, flight safety situations and all and they have to make their entry out uh, they have to make their uh, entry out a sign, sign out sign out is already done before debriefing is okay Okay. And then after that, uh, every all the crew they gather and they do the debriefing. Okay. Because debriefing is all about what has happened in the flight in case yeah. if there is any situation arises, arose like maybe uh, medical or any kind of emergency, any kind of passenger conflict, or even crew conflict because conflict can happen yeah, yeah. between the crew also. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the uh, yes. discussion all these things, and even if nothing has happened, even if the flight was very smooth. And very good of it. All the happy crew still or uh, a debriefing is required. You know, then the supervisor or uh, normally they appreciate 
uh, to pick up the hard work. So that is also done. So this is what okay. all happens in the detail. Fine. Okay. So now um, uh, let's move on. And let's move on to the I hope you have watched the videos which I have given you yesterday. Um, yes, my missus, I watched it. Okay, so could you please tell me uh, what do you understand by manicure? Just uh, a small manicure. Word. Like it's a uh, like we have to keep our uh, nails uh, like uh, attractive and uh, it should not be infected by germs. So. Am I right? Yes, like, you are uh, right. Uh, like uh, if a person sees us, uh, like uh, our appearance to be in a neat procedure, a neat procedure when a person sees us, when we appear in a person, um, person's okay. appearance. So that means you have to just keep your nails uh, you yeah. know, clean, clean and uh, yeah. you know in good condition. Yes. And uh, it is very uh, very much required. Why? Right? Because obviously it is a part of personal mm. hygiene, so it is required. Okay? This is okay. And you must have uh, you know watched it properly. That what are the steps you have to do? On the yeah, yeah. Like uh, it was mostly like a female stuff. <laughs> the, yes, it was like... mostly the female stuff. But I'll tell you yeah. one thing. In case if you have to go uh, through, you know what. To clean your nails or something like that. See, when, whenever it comes to cleaning your nails or cleaning your hand or something like that, it has nothing to do with male or female because yeah, cleanliness yeah. is for both male and female. Uh, okay. No, no, Suppose not. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not mentioning it. <laughs> like I I'm saying, the process. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the process is fine, but for male, I'm giving you a you know a very easy things in case if you want to go ahead and apply yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. It's just uh, you know you take uh, lukewarm water with the uh, lemon juice uh, squeezed mm. in it, and then you mix it, or you can even add a few. with the lemon juice. You can add a bit of uh, shampoo, a little bit of shampoo or something like that, or body wash, and then you can mix it, and then you take a used brush, you know, used toothbrush, and then you soak your hands in that water for like around five minutes, then take it off, and then you clean your nails with that brush gently. So that the area around the cuticles, the nails, everything is clean. Okay, and that's it. For male, that's it's fine. Because that's the that's the normal thing. Why? Because the lemon juice is a good uh, cleansing agent. Everybody knows that because it has that acid in it. So it is good plus the uh, the soap effect of the shampoo or anything which you are adding that will go ahead and clean your hands and the nails. Now uh, the pedicure also you must have watched the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So same. that is also almost the same. It's so in case you want to go ahead and clean your uh, it's hand, uh, it's hand nail and it's a uh, leg nail. I'm sorry? Uh, like a manicure, it is uh, shown as uh, nails and the pedicure shown the steps to follow to be in the leg. For the um, feet? Yeah. Uh, okay. To keep our feet smooth and uh, to keep our feet, feet nails smooth. Okay. And... Uh, what about the hair care? What did you learn about yeah, the yeah. Uh, I yes. watched the hair care video. It was nice. Um, so what like, did you learn from it? Like, um, they say, uh, like we have to take uh, foods like uh, green uh, green vegetables and uh, eggs. And uh, uh, if we apply oil daily, then we have to take shower daily so that uh, it will make our uh, have more damage if it's causing damage uh, if it's been meant to damage means it will cause more damage uh, okay. and so we have washed it properly so let's move ahead okay. so today we are going to start with the safety and emergency procedures okay okay safety and emergency procedures so it's uh, as the name suggests it is the safety of the passengers and the aircraft and also uh, the emergency procedure is all about any kind of emergency, medical emergency or technical emergency which occurs on board. How are we going to take care of it? For example, uh, you know, there shouldn't be any chaos which happen, you know, can occur. For example, any emergency occurs, a person who is actually, you know, in that emergency situation, they will go, uh, how 
might need to take care of this emergency situation. So we are trained. Cabin crew is trained properly how to take care of any such kind of emergency which can happen on board during flight okay. or during the flight. Okay. okay. Uh, so there are many many emergency situations which can happen, like fire. There can be fire on board. There can be decompression. Decompression is a situation where uh, uh, you know, any uh, part of the aircraft or uh, if there's a crack in the aircraft or any part of the aircraft just blows away into the air. And then the okay, outer okay. air comes yeah. in and that's the decompression because that's the loss of the cabin pressure that happens. Mm -hmm. So that is also one kind of emergency. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then uh, what if um, uh, the pilot who is riding the plane uh, he gets incapacitated. Incapacitated in the sense that any in any situation, the pilot or the first officer uh, goes unwell completely or gets a heart attack or dies or something, such kind of situation. So in that case, how do we take care of the situation? That is also an emergency situation, okay. right? And when we talk about we, we, we talk about smoke as well, because many of the passengers, even if we uh, have given the clear in the indication that uh, it is prohibited to smoke in the aircraft, still many passengers, they go into the toilet and they smoke. I have encountered many such situations that uh, there are many such flights where people actually go into the aircraft without saying and they start to smoke and we get to know why because there's a smoke detector in the lavatory or in the toilet. That's how yeah. the alarm rings and we get to know. So this is also one kind of situation how to get to know, how to take care of that. Then there are many medical emergencies. For example, a passenger has fallen down on the aisle, or passenger needs some oxygen, can't breathe, okay? Or uh, there's a delivery, like the mother uh, is about to deliver the baby, and we are trained on that completely. We can do a train on that, how to take care of the delivery process. Then uh, uh, there are different other medical emergencies to talk about. So, so, the procedures is all about all these things and that on that thing we are trained. Okay. So the mandatory requirement, uh, it is a mandatory requirement for all the cabin crew. And as I've already told you what is it about and the importance of it. Why is this important? Because we cabin crew are the only one on the uh, aircraft during in the air or during the flight we are going to take care of the passenger. So we have to be completely trained on the medical as well as the technical emergency of the people. Right? We are the nurses on board, we are the doctors on board. And even if for uh, any kind of medical situation arises, we do make a PA, you know, PA, a public announcement for the doctor. However, if there's no one available, then we are the one who is going to take it. Right? So let's move ahead. Yeah, okay, sure. So uh, we'll start with the flight terminology. There are many terminologies which is uh, situated with the aviation uh, and people who are trained on that we'll get to know like those who are from the aviation industry they will get to know all these terminologies so however we will start with the first thing is cabin attendant cabin attendant is a trained person responsible to look after the passengers on the aircraft okay now when i'm saying to look after the passengers on the aircraft i mean from the perspective of safety as well as service both okay, okay so when look after just not the safe service part, but also the safety part. Because safety is the foremost, I have always told you, the first duty and responsibility for safety, then comes the service, mm -hmm. right? So that's what cabin attendant is. Uh, flight, now when we could say flight, uh, flight is like, you can say, oh, when is your flight? What time is your flight? So what this flight is actually? It's the aircraft movement from one, uh, its point of origin to its destination, for example, an aircraft will start, will take off from Chennai and it will land in Delhi. So, what its point of origin is? Chennai, uh, Delhi. Oh, sorry, sorry. Origin. Chennai, Chennai, Chennai. Chennai. Because from there it has originated. So, the flight has bound, has started on. And where it will land? Delhi. In Delhi. So now uh, that's the destination. So this is the uh, aircraft movement from one part, one point to the other point that comprises and passes the flight. That's how we call the flight. Uh, in, in case if you are talking to the other people, what time is your flight? And uh, where are you going? So 
something like that. So when you're talking about the client, that means you're talking about a particular movement of the aircraft from the origin to its destination. That's the flight. Okay. okay. Now we there are many different kinds of flight. Okay. And first is passenger flight. This is the certified aircraft with the flight schedules and rules are published. For example, a commercial aircraft like uh, Jet Airways, like uh, Vistara, uh, Indigo Airlines. These are the aircraft certified by the DGC. DGC is the regulatory body within India, which actually gives the certification to the aircraft to fly, right? For them to fly. And that is, uh, these are the certified aircraft where now the flight schedule will be published, the rules will be published, and they are ready to take the passengers on board and fly them to their destination. Did you understand? Yeah, yeah. So these are the passenger flight. Then comes scheduled flight. Scheduled flight, they're departing and arriving on scheduled time. Scheduled time is the sense, uh, it's, it's like uh, already being uh, given a particular time that this is the time we have set. And at this time, the flight will take mm -hmm. off or that. Departing or arriving. Departing like leaving the, the origin, arriving, mm -hmm. arriving. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is scheduled. Okay, delayed flight, as the name suggests, it operates behind the published and scheduled time. That means uh, it uh, is uh, um, it is late. I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the time is the flight is about to take off at uh, three o'clock in the afternoon, but it got delayed by one hour, so it took off at four o'clock in the uh, in the evening, right? So this is the this is the delay part, and even the landing part also. So it was about to land at six, it landed at seven, so it was delayed by one hour. This is what it is. Uh, ferry flight. Ferry flight is a type of flight where there is full crew complement. Like the uh, number of crew which are required to be on the aircraft for a particular flight, they are all there, but there are no passengers. Okay. Okay. There are no passengers. And these kind of flights are uh, done at times whenever there is a requirement at the uh, destination from where they have to pick the passengers. It happens, for example, you're flying from, uh, um, say, Kolkata to Mumbai. Okay. So now what happens? Uh, the, uh, the There is a ferry flight which the crew is doing from Kolkata and they're going to Mumbai. But there are no passengers on flight. Why? Because it's a ferry flight. Why the aircraft is going empty? Because there must be some situation of technical emergency at Mumbai due to which the aircraft has got technical and it cannot fly back within the same aircraft. So okay. this aircraft from Kolkata has been called there and they land and they take the passengers in the car. Okay. 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 So this okay. is how it is done. <coughs> Excuse me. Can you see my camera? Oh, no. Just a second. Okay. Yeah, I just Okay. So, uh, next is the charter flight. Charter. charter flight is the, again, a certified aircraft and its flight schedules and routes are not published. This is actually a kind of uh, flight where uh, some companies as well as some owners own the aircraft. And they fly according to where, according to their need. It is not uh, VIP flight. Yes, VIP flight. The VIP or VIP. Flight. Okay. So we have understood. Okay. Let's move on. Okay. Estimated time of arrival. ETA. This is uh, you must have understood because this is a. Uh, uh, a kind of uh, you know a point of time which has been given that at this point yes we estimate that at this point it is going to land or it is going to uh, take off. Okay. So this is the estimated time of arrival. It's the actual time. Actual time of arrival is something where it is going to arrive at that particular time. No, not here, not there. Not even one minute here and there. So that's the actual of the time of arrival. Estimated time of arrival is given. For example, if you are booking a flight. Uh, you are uh, doing a reservation, you are on an airline website. So, the time of arrival or departure which you will see is the estimated time of arrival. Departure. 
okay. maybe it now, will happen yes in this that time. this is the time we have set and it will fly at this time and in case if it flies at that particular time then at that becomes the actual time of departure it because it has already taken off at that time so now it's the actual time it has happened okay, okay? flying time as the name suggests is the period between the airborne and the touchdown like uh, the moment the flight takes off and landing yes the doors are closed the aircraft doors are closed and the flight takes off mm. from that point to the point where the aircraft touches down on the land on the ground so that is flying time rear is a uh, aviation term for back so it's yeah, the yeah. back of the aircraft. Yeah. Okay. There is chops. Chops is the wedge. It's a wooden wedge which is placed in front and rear of the wheels to hold the aircraft position from it. You will uh, see uh, that uh, the aircraft wheels uh, they are uh, being uh, you know uh, kind of uh, given a break or a stop by a wooden wedge, a wooden block is being yeah, placed. Yeah. I know, I know. Yes. To stop the, this is to done hold that, uh, exactly to prevent the front or back. Yes, yeah. inward movement. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. this is very much required by the tool the aircraft can move. Yeah. Sure. Then chops off and chops off. Now what is chops off? Chops off is those chops, those wooden blocks is being taken off. Yeah. And when when do you think it will be taken off? Like uh, when the time uh like if the flight is going to uh scheduled for uh, next departure uh, the chocks will be off and uh, they will go to the maintenance and they make their arrangements and they go to the airport uh, chocks on means like uh, when after the departure after the departure uh, while uh, parking the flight uh, well after parking the flight they have to make the chocks on so that uh, they have to make sure the flight uh, the aircraft uh, will not move in any kind of situation while uh, if there is any climatic change uh, air directions is uh, changing uh, sometimes the air directions will uh, hit the aircraft and uh, make the aircraft turn around sometimes maybe to avoid okay. this kind of situation uh, they will make chalk sound okay. very good that means you know about it yeah, yeah. okay so chalks uh, yes obviously when the flight is about to take off then the chalks are removed so that the flight will mm -hmm. go it will taxi, it will go towards the runway and it will take yeah. Chops on is when the flight has already uh, touched down or the runway, runs on the runway towards the taxi bay, comes mm -hmm. to a complete stop and the chops are put on to have given the inevitable movement of the weeks, which is good. Now, okay. the block time. Block time is the period from chops off to chops off. Simple. The moment is the uh, the blocks have been removed and the aircraft takes off, landed to its destination, the aircraft, uh, then the chops are off. So that entire time from chops off to chops off is the block time. And cabin crew are paid also on the block time. They are paid on the flight time. They are also paid on the block time and they get the bonus on the block time. Okay. Bonus on the and, block time. Yeah, bonus also. Like, uh, for example, they are, obviously they are earning uh, the basic salary, they are earning with the flying hours, they are earning the meal allowance, all these uh, things, plus the block hours. In okay. case if they have, uh, every airline has set here excessive block hours. Time. So, for example, if an airline has said that you are, uh, you have exceeded the thousand hours of block time in a year, then you will get uh, bonus. this bonus. Okay. Extra money. Okay. So this this also happens, and every airline have their own criteria towards this. Now uh, the cargo. Cargo is the everybody wants. Most cargo is yeah. they are carried in the section, which is down the aircraft uh, body, and uh, like I would say, it's in the belly of the aircraft. Okay. Yeah. Now there's a checked in baggage. Checked in baggage. The baggage which is carried in the cargo section holds the plane bag. Whenever you go, you go for check-in, you put the bag, which is going inside the cargo, mm -hmm. they put the plane tag, right? Yeah, yeah. So that is that is the check-in baggage. Check and uh, there's hand or carry-on baggage, which is carried into the cabin, mm -hmm. in the overhead bin, right? Okay. 
there's an overhead bin where you keep the luggage yeah, yeah. in the airport. So that's the one. And there is a claim tag for that as well, which is being given. And there are different uh, requirements with different airlines that this much baggage you can carry, this much technical baggage you can carry, kgs. Um, however, when it comes to the carry on baggage, it is almost the same with seven kgs. Okay. okay. Now, when we are talking about the excess baggage, excess baggage is uh, which exceeds the baggage of others. For example, if 25 kg is the uh, baggage limit that you have to carry uh, 25 kg in the checked in baggage. But in case if it exceeds 25 kg, it has become like 28 or 29, something like that, you have to pay one, you know, money for one kg. Okay. So, yes, and that is, uh, I think uh, for domestic, it is around 400 to five. 400 to 500 something like that and for uh, okay. international it is more than that okay so four kg it is 400 to 500 yes somewhat like that it might okay. it, it is subjected to change so it might have changed i have no idea but i still remember it was like around 400 for domestic for domestic okay. then uh, headwind headwind uh, when an aircraft flies towards the uh, you know, front of the aircraft, you know, the yeah, nose yeah. of the aircraft. Yeah. So when they are flying, that is the headwind, which headwind. blows yeah, yeah. parallel to the yes. So yes. you you have studied the aviation, movement, oh, right? yeah. yes, yes. yes, which blows parallel and opposite direction to the line of the aircraft. Right. Like aircraft is flying like this, mm. and the wind is coming here. So that is yeah. the headwind. Okay. Opposite. Uh, like uh, and the nose faces the uh, exact point of the wind uh, directly to the wind uh, yes, direction yes. of so, the so, so that's why it flows parallel as well as opposite to the line of the aircraft so sometimes what happens is the headwind is more the aircraft will take uh, more time to fly and reach the destination but uh, if the tailwind is more than the headwind we are coming next to the tailwind tailwind is more to the headwind then definitely the fly, aircraft will fly faster. Why? Because it is getting a push from the back. Mm, yeah. With the, from the wind. And that wind yeah, yeah. Uh, is the tailwind. So yeah. it will push the aircraft forward and the aircraft will fly definitely faster as compared to the aircraft. Okay. So it will impact the flying time of the aircraft. Okay. okay. Now comes the parking bay. Mm. As the name suggests, parking bay is the area where the aircrafts are parked. Simple. Parking. Yes, yes. Runway. Runway is the path used to take off and used for take off and landing. Okay. Like airline, the aircraft runs and take off, or aircraft touches down, and that's the runway path. Taxi way is the path which is used to move from parking bay to from the runway. I will tell you. There's a taxi way. Taxi way is, for example, there is an uh, area where the aircraft is parked. Now from there to now the chops is moved. Chops is off. The aircraft starts to move. When the aircraft starts to move, it will go to the taxi. Bay. When it is taxi, it is moving. When it is moving, and it will move and it will go to the runway. Now it will not move, it will run and it will take Right? So that's the taxi way. Embarkation. Embarkation is the uh, aviation term. Yes, passenger boarding okay. the plane. This embarkation is the passenger leaving the plane. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And uh, when we are talking about the aerobridge, aerobridge, as the name suggests, it's the bridge in the air which connects the airport and the aircraft. So it is very, very comfortable and easy for the passengers to. Uh, come from the airport, from the boarding gate, and they take the aerobridge path and they enter the aircraft. Okay. Yeah. Any questions till now? Oh, no, not it. Hello. No, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Do yeah. you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Apart from aerobridge, there are different other, uh, you know, uh, things through which the uh, passengers could board the aircraft. In which I hope you have understood what is it. You have got the idea what I'm talking about. No, not it. Like, no, uh, I'll, I'll show you, show you okay. the picture. Okay. I'll show you the picture. Aerobridge, uh, okay. 
I'll show you the picture. Please let me, please stop me where you have not understood. Okay, okay, so, okay, okay, so I will show you the picture so that you can understand. Okay, sure. Can you see my screen? No, ma'am, like it was uh, in the uh, in the tailwind parking bay, runway taxi bay page. Uh, you can't see my screen right now. It's the same screen which has been shown there. No, no. Uh, yeah, I can see your screen, but it was in the definitions page. Okay, good. Hello. Do you see the image? No, no, no. Uh, the page was no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Now, can you see? Ah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. This is Aerobridge. Okay, okay, sure. This is the Aerobridge. See, uh, oh. it is at the X. I'll show you. This is how it is. It's connected to the aircraft. And this entire bridge, why it is Aerobridge calls it, why do we call it as an Aerobridge? Because it's a bridge in the air. Simple. Okay. So, this bridge is connected, the other part is connected towards the terminal building. Terminal building terminal. is the area, yes, where uh, okay. we go, passengers go into to the airport. Okay. Yes. So this is how the passengers actually walk, 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 and get into the airport. Okay. 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 Now there are there are other things which I want to show you. There is it's known as ramp slide. Okay. Uh, there are many aircraft in India which actually goes with the ramp slide. Uh, ramp slide. Um, Oh, like for ladder, right? It seems to be like a ladder. Yeah, it seems like a yeah, it seems like a ladder. There are yes, there are yes. ladders also. There's yeah, a yeah. kind of ramp slide from there. Uh, the passengers can yeah. go down. Uh, Deboot from the aircraft. Right? Yes. Yeah, yes. I've seen them. I see. Yes. Yeah, like this. Oh yes, like this. I see. So this one. So these kind of ramp slides we have in several aircraft, in several airlines, like Indigo has them. Indigo is normally using this ramp slide every time. Some use step ladder also. Step ladder is okay. Also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. So let's go ahead with the this thing. Now you can see. Yeah, your screen is still. So now let's move on to the bulkhead. Now what is the bulkhead of the aircraft? Bulkhead is the, you know, the area, uh, it's a partition wall from both the aircraft to separate the compartments. For example, economy section, business class section, and okay. the first class section. The first row of the aircraft, which, is, which has a wall bill, and it separates that particular section from the other section. So that is the bulkhead. Okay. Shall I show you the bulkhead as well? Yeah, I know. Like uh, separating the first class and uh, with uh, another yes. class, right? Yes, okay. So you must have bought like the... in, uh, uh, in India, like uh, um, nowadays, I think so. Like most of the aircraft are not uh, kept like economic class, first class, and all. Is they or have been practicing this much? I'm asking. Today, uh... They have not kept it. Yes, in Indian aircraft, there are many aircraft. Yeah, where... most of the aircraft are not following this uh, kind of culture, first class, second class, economic class, business class and all. Like, uh, I think uh, instead, apart from India, uh, it seems to be like uh, outside. I think so. Like uh, in India, I didn't uh, see most of the aircraft was uh, simply as uh, like uh, what all the cabins are uh, as same as like I didn't see any first class, second class, like economic class. See, uh, actually what happens in uh, most of the Indian, air, the Indian mm. airlines, the yes. aircraft which they own, they do not have the first class facility, but there have been 
uh, some small aircrafts, but there is a different cabin uh, altogether in the front, which they have named it as a first class according to the seats which has been uh, you know, installed there. And the other half of the uh, cabin, they have taken it all economy. However, mm. there are some rows in the front, like three, two rows, which have dedicated it as a, uh, you know, first um, economy or uh, something or, or business class or something like that. <clears throat> so there are some aircraft which have the different cabins, like Vistara. Vistara do have uh, a business class cabin and separated by the entire economy section back. So, uh, However, there are not much many aircraft. But if you but fly in India, air, India, it was not that, like, yes. if you fly in Air India, they do have aircrafts. Okay, okay. They do have because they have many aircrafts. They have Boeing. They have Airbus three forty three forty like that. So they have uh, these uh, kind of facilities available. Yes, However, sir. when you will when you will get to see the aircrafts in the Middle East, like Qatar, Emirates, etc., like they have all these facilities, first class, business class, economy, the entire section is being separated. Now, it is, uh, I can understand this. It's for mostly for international aircraft, it seems to be like this, right? Yes. yes. So now you will see this in the picture. This is the bulkhead. This is the oh, okay. which is separated from the section. So section okay. This is how it's separated. Okay. okay. So now, uh, if we go back to the slide here. So this is what I was talking about. So let's go yeah. on to the hangar. Hangar is the housing of an aircraft. For example, okay. the aircraft has completed all its, uh, I would say, like, like now it needs servicing. Service. Right? So now it, when it needs servicing, it goes to the housing of the aircraft. But the aircraft are parked, they are being cleaned, they are being serviced in whatever way it's possible, and then they come out of the hangar and they so that's the hangar, the housing of the aircraft. Mm -hmm, yeah. so the aircraft is bought for renovation kind of thing, you can say, for servicing and everything. Like how you people, when you uh, go take your car for servicing, you take your oh. bike for servicing. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I know. I worked there in hangar before. Oh, you worked there. Then, then yeah. you did. So now, where were you working in Hangar? Like, uh, uh, like in uh, Mysore Airport. Uh, I was gone for training for around uh, three months of OJT onshore training. Uh, so I worked there in uh, charter flights. Uh, so in must, there. Okay, so you have the knowledge of the charter flights. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Chartered and uh, no, uh, yeah, some uh, like uh, I say, like. Uh, mm, so, uh, like passenger flights also is uh, like uh, I can uh, carry on some uh, training maintenance okay. maintenance training yes. okay. mm -hmm. so now we are going ahead with the 24 hour clock 24 hour clock we know that it's midnight to midnight from 0 to 24 uh, it's right at the uh, 12 o'clock in the midnight so that's the 24, 24 hour clock for example start for example it's like uh, 0, 0, 0, 0 hours the midnight then it goes to 1 Zero zero one uh, hundred hours. So it's the it's the uh, one o'clock in the midnight. Then two, three, four, five, six, seven till twelve p.m. Then comes the thirteen hundred hours, which is the one o'clock in the afternoon. So this is the twenty-four hour clock. You understood what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Okay. Then comes the 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock is the midnight to noon is AM and noon to midnight is PM. It's the same thing like uh, you are using uh, 1 AM, 2 AM, 3 AM, 4 PM till 12 PM. Then again it comes 1 PM. It is not going to be read as 1300 hours or 1400 hours or 1500 hours. It will be read as 1 PM, 2 PM, 3 PM. Okay. Okay, let me ask you one thing. Uh, what if I tell you that the uh, your flight is from Chennai to Kolkata and it is bound to uh, bound to fly and take off at uh, 1600 hours and will land at uh, you know in Kolkata um, around uh, say uh, 1830 hours. So please let me know. What time of the day it is? Uh, it means 
when we are talking about 1600 hours and 1830 hours. Uh, can you repeat the question, ma'am, please? Okay. And uh, you have the idea of the 24 hour clock? Yeah, 24 hour clock means uh, like from morning 12 o'clock to uh, night 12 o'clock. Okay. okay. So now, if I ask you a question where your flight is bound from Chennai to Kolkata, it is about to take off. The scheduled departure from Chennai is at 1600 hours, and the okay. scheduled arrival to Kolkata is 1830 hours. So, okay. tell me the time uh, at uh, you know, in regard to 12 hour clock, what is the time at what time the flight will take off and what time the flight will land? Six. Uh, 1600 uh, uh, has been uh, morning 12 to uh, I, I can't able to understand. Okay, great. Let me see if I can do this. Like uh, 24 hour clock means morning 12 to night 12 o'clock. Am I right? Is it, uh, am I right, ma'am? Uh, yes, you are. Uh, let's see. This is what I was trying to make. Of this one. This is, do you see this? Now, do you see this? Yeah, yes. Zero, twelve. It's zero 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 twelve a.m. Right. Okay. So this is the midnight, mm. right? Yes. Now comes after that of twelve one. So one a.m. So like this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 12. and twelve. Okay. Twelve in the afternoon. So it becomes twelve p.m. Twelve in the afternoon. Then after that it comes to thirteen hundred. So this is the twenty four hour clock we are talking about because okay. the counting is in twenty four. 1, 2, 3, 12, uh, 10, 11, then 12, then 13, 14, 16. The counting is literally, it comes to the 24 hours. So that's the reason why we are uh, calling it just 24 hours. See, 1300 hours, that is the 1 p.m. in the afternoon, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, yeah, Did you understand? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, in case if you have any doubt, please do ask me. No, 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 like uh, this 12 hour timing for forward in right. Uh, uh, it's a railway timing. I know this. 12 hour timing is right? Like uh, it, it's a, uh, it will, be, uh, it is followed as a railway timing. So, like, uh, yes. yes, I know. I can understand this one. Yes. yes. 12 hour timing is the uh, timing which is being followed uh, normally in India. Uh, hmm. what you say. Uh, okay. But the 24-hour clock is also it's taken by the aviation. Uh, aviation. Mostly, it is the, yes, it is uh, mostly used in the aviation uh, industry, and that's why I have to make you aware of the 24-hour clock as well. 12 hour clock, everybody knows. Yes, sir. We we are going to you know the other side. The other side. This is this is the other side, which we take it as 12 hour clock. 12 hour clock. But this one. Uh, like uh, this one, this is 24 hours. This is a 24. Okay. Why? Because then 23, so 2300 hours, it becomes the 1100, uh, the 11 pm, 11 pm in the night. So you asked me like uh, first, I right asked you, night to Kolkata. Uh, yes. It's a 16 hour flight. So uh, it will be uh, 0 to uh, morning uh, 12 am to um evening for him 4 p.m 16 or two. i asked you that the flight when it will take off at uh, from chennai at 1600 hours okay 1600 hours okay so what time is the flight taking off in 12 uh, o'clock 4 or 4 a.m sorry 4 p.m 4 p.m and that will be in morning or the evening or afternoon 
inch uh, pm in uh, afternoon pm yeah. so that is 16 hours later 600 hours and that is 4 pm in the night, 4 o'clock in the evening right yeah 4 o'clock in the evening and uh, it is at uh, 18 30 hours so uh, 5 30 look carefully no, no, like uh, it will be departuring, uh, like landing there around 18.30. Am I right? Okay, let's say, let's say it is uh, landing at uh, 1800 hours. So it will be six o'clock at the evening. Six o'clock, six o'clock in the way, morning, evening, afternoon. Evening, evening, evening. Why it is evening? Oh, Oh, it's all PM. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, it is evening because see, it's written here 6 PM, post meridian. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes? yes. And we are, when we are talking after, you know, when we for 24 o'clock, we are going 12 PM, then 1300, that is 1 o'clock in the afternoon, 12, uh, 1400, that is 2 o'clock in, in the afternoon. In the afternoon. Three o'clock in the afternoon. You understand that? If you yes, want, yes. you can take a screenshot of it in case if you want. Okay. Just to go, go to, because this is very, very required, very much required in the aviation industry. So this okay. is how your rosters will be published. Okay. Like your timetable where you're flying. These hmm. kind of timings will be given and uh, you have to get used to it. That's the reason why I'm, you know, telling you about the 24 hour clock. Now, when okay. I'm talking to you, when, when I'm asking you, uh, the flight lands at 18.30 hours. Mm. 18 what is the, yes, what is the exact time? 18.30 hours, uh, 6.30. Very good. 6.30 in the evening, right? Evening, yes. Exactly. Now, now if, if I say that flight is landing at uh, 18.45 hours. Or uh, 6.45 6 45 pm at the evening exactly in evening very good so you have got hold of it right now yeah yeah yes yes, yes. Okay. okay so now let's go back to this now uh we'll talk about gmt and UTC. gmt the full form is green which green. Green time. Yeah. Okay. and uh, utc is universal time coordinated it is uh, the time, it is the cent I would say the universal time, which is being according to which the time uh, uh, is uh, scheduled for each and every uh, place All or over. the country they're talking about. Okay. Oh. So Greenwich is the area somewhere in the UK to which it is in the center of somewhere, which to which it is being, you know, the time has been taken. So, that kind of uh, the uh, you would say that latitude, longitude, yes, you have okay. uh, studied in geography. Yeah. So accordingly, the UTC and GMT is being situated. You know, like uh, uh, GMT means uh, a time which is followed by a particular country, universal time uh, is the all over the world. Um, yes. Okay. For example, yeah. uh, as I've written here, the India UTC and GMT is 5.30. 5.30. There is no PM, there is no hours, nothing after 5.30. Nothing like that. It's just 5.30. Now, what does that mean? For example, time in time in Dubai. Okay. Time in Dubai is uh, 1400 hours. 1400, okay. So, what is the time uh, in 12 hours long? Time in Dubai is 14 hours. 1400 hours. 1400 so, what is hours. the time in 12 hour clock? I just showed you. 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock in the afternoon, right? 2 yeah, p.m.? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, 2 p.m. in the and in the bike, right? Oh. What will be the timing in India? Now, the GMT of uh, UAE is. Um, it is uh, around. Uh, it's it's like one hour, one and a half hours, you know, back. The Dubai time is one and a half hours back of India. Okay, okay. 
Okay. So now tell me if it is one hour, one hour fast oh, that yeah. in Dubai the timing. What do you think is timing in India? One and a half first means uh, so uh, it will be here three thirty afternoon. Exactly. Okay. Two p.m. in Dubai and India. And three thirty afternoon. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So they have the uh, so for example so the, that is the thing which I'm telling you that UAE has uh, the GMT of plus one thirty. So the, this is how it goes and. Okay. Uh, we, we actually, uh, GMT is required to check the time difference between the different countries and uh, check to know that what is the timing, what's the local time at present. And whenever you will get the timetable for the cabin crew, you will always be uh, given the timings in UTC GMT. UTC GMT, okay. Yes. And you have to get hold of those UTC GMT. You, have to, uh, you do not have to memorize because anyways, the UTC and GMT will be mentioned there according to the particular country or the particular place in the world. So you can make out what is the local time. They will not give you the local time. Okay. They won't give you the local time. That, that is not applicable to India, right? Because here, uh, everywhere it is the five, it is five The local mm -hmm. time is the same. So here yes. it is not applicable. In case if you are working for an international airline, then that goes to it. Okay. So you will get used to that. You do not have to memorize it. You just have to know that this is how you are going to use it. Okay? okay. Altitude. Altitude is the vertical distance measured from mean sea level. Okay? Mm. From the mean sea level, the vertical distance which is measured, that's the altitude. No. At what altitude the aircraft is flying? What is the altitude of the aircraft at which the aircraft flies? So there are different altitudes. The maximum one is uh, around forty thousand feet at which the aircraft can fly. Yes, yes, yes. Like a, uh, like every aircraft has different altitude has been scheduled to exactly. fly at that altitude. Exactly, exactly. So it depends on the uh, destination where you're going. Depends on the yeah. headwind they have. And the OTR routes maybe scheduled. Yes, it depends on the routes also. Very good. So now uh, we talk about the terminal building. This is uh, one of the buildings which is very important for uh, the travelers because the travelers get into the building, they, you know, they embark, they disembark, they transit, there's a checking process, there's immigration, each and everything takes place uh, Hello. Um, uh, I have one doubt, ma'am. I had one doubt. Like, uh, can you move on to a previous page, please? Uh, like here, you see, uh, you told me UTC GMT 530. So, um what's that mean <laughs> okay it's like 5 30 either uh you know five hours oh minutes. like i can understand that uh, uh like from here the timing will be different to the another country so but what does this mean india utc gmt 5 30 means because totally in india uh mm. totally in india wherever i travel to the stage it will be 5.30, it seems to be, huh? For India, it is fixed. For fixed. the other countries, it is fixed. For example, fixed, okay. let's, let's take the example of uh, Singapore. Okay. Singapore, the UTC is uh, 8 plus 8, uh, oh. 8.00. 8. Why 5.30? Because uh, this is how the, they have measured it from the Greenwich line. Oh, okay, okay. You know, okay. I've, I've mentioned to you about that green bitch thing. They yeah. measured it from the green. Do you want me to show you a video or explain on this? A small uh, video? Like, uh, my point of question is like, uh, uh, while I travel in India to wherever place in India, so mm -hmm. the time will be 5.30. Uh, instead, apart from that, uh, while I travel from India to another country, so the time will be changing universal time oh sorry uh, the gmt time will be changing from country to country yes gmt time will change from, uh, from country to country okay that's okay, okay. see I'll, I'll show you this thing okay. 